And welcome back to Jeff Corey Nange live at the Intercontinental Hotel. This is why we do some of the shows that we do to inspire some of you out there. I certainly have been inspired by a 20 year old young lady with albinism. They're just normal people, she says. And she is, and she's proving it. Listen up. Her Twitter handle is at Grace Maya, M A Y A. Mine is at Kurenanga Jeff, the hashtag people with albinism. And we're joined also with the woman who began this foundation, Dr. Toxy Foundation for People with Albinism. Albinism Foundation. Incredible. She's helped more than 660 people with albinism so far and counting. You still didn't tell me, Doc, how many people in Kenya have albinism? About 20,000? More than 20,000? My estimate is should be about 15 to 20,000 people. 20. Yes, yeah, my estimate is that wow. much, yeah. Wow. Because from the okay. part, yeah. Your foundation, and, and you know, we're going to put this up right now because you have a fantastic logo and you can hold this, and Gracie, you can hold it as well. Okay. But let me ask, where do you get the funding from? Because, you know, you're, you're giving free eye, whatever, examination, your free glasses, free everything almost. I think, you know, the a lot of people actually come forward when they know that the person who is actually doing is uh, as a genuine person and uh, yeah and especially i think asian community has really gone out of the way to help me i got a lot of uh, support from uh, raja foundation from uh, uh, now banks are coming forward a lot of people but i think one person i would really give a full credit for uh, our program success is a person called uh, mr zul nimji of 3z foundation because when i offered that i will see them free of cost he said dr choksi i will pay for the glasses because i could have seen them from morning to evening if people who come you will be surprised uh, jeff that children come to me from kakamega meru without shoes some of them are so poor because uh, fathers have given up the uh, uh, have left the woman children are growing up with grandparents but grandparents are already very old uh, you know uh, raising them up is a real challenge so we have seen many children coming with absolutely torn torn clothes no shoes and all these things and, and how would they buy glasses worth 5000 or 5500 right. even my consultation charges are quite uh, yeah. uh, quite a bit so any, i think any, any yeah. black people giving you money I think they have. Quite a bit of people did uh, did come forward. Sure? Yeah, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, don't be polite. Eh? This is not a program to <laughs> be One polite. Mr. James Jagwa, the moment he knew that I had started my uh, foundation, just immediately transferred money in my account. Oh. Yeah, so they are wonderful people around. I think they are very, really wonderful people around. But uh, yes, I think it's a, it's a bit of a challenge because, see, a lot of money does come for uh, people with albinism. But I just want to bring, uh, highlight some of the problems that we actually face. Like, you know, suppose... Uh, a lot of money I think uh, uh, came for the sunscreen and uh, sunscreen did reach to a lot of clinics in Kenya but suppose the child is so poor that he does not have money to go to the for the transport to go to the clinic to collect how does it reach him there are a lot of uh, a lot of money comes to Kenya for awareness raising now the style of awareness raising is you do workshops uh, the people who conduct the workshop take a big chunk of money people who sit there are hardly given 500 shillings which might not be even their best fare so uh, there is money it's not that it's not there but I think you know you have to actually reach out every every person has a different need That's like so true. many children like uh, m because of being single parent children or children living with grandparents they brought to my notice about four or five years ago that many of these children are being chased away from school because of lack of school fees I had no intention of paying school fees in the beginning and at the moment I'm paying school we have our foundation pays full school fees for 50 albino children okay I'm going to and ask you how people can get in touch with you in a moment but before that what does this logo mean now uh, uh, when we were creating logo, I think, you know, sometimes just works. Uh, the two brown hands are the hands of the trustees and the members of the foundation. This foundation has been formed by 11 young uh, women with albinism. I chose women because I feel if it's an al a person with albinism, a man, he will somehow get a wife and have children. Uh, women find it very difficult to get married, uh, especially with albinism. So my, my program uh, uh, is uh, with 11 uh, al girls with albinism as my members. So these two brown hands uh, signify the hands of the uh, trustees and the members. The two black figures are the parents of children with albinism and families in which uh, a child with albinism is growing. The white figure in the middle is a happy albino child with the hands up and that is the aim of our foundation. The, the map of Africa is the black world where the white children with albinism live and our help ever hurt never is the motto that I want to really is to appeal to the world stop killing of the albino children in Africa because Africa is the only continent that continues. I, my heart pained when I heard that in Angola they have not seen children with albinism go to school. Please, these children are normal children. They are 
extremely brilliant. If we show you some of the results of our children who perform in school, they, all the ch children that I sponsor, almost 99% of them come in the first five in the class. They are extremely clever. Uh, Grace is also studying on scholarship. So you just have to give them a chance yeah. to unlock their potential and do that. I think yeah. after they've listened to Gracie today, I mean, I think a lot of minds will change overnight. Because, you know, this is the future right here. Yes. And, and, you know, and she said it, that we're just normal people, she says. And, and Kenya is lucky. We have uh, Mumbi Hugi as a high court judge. Yep. We have uh, Isaac Mavra as correct, uh, correct. Yes. And we have so many more. Do you see others, Gracie? Do you see others coming up? Well, you know, you've dealt with a lot of people with albinism. Mm -hmm. Are there others coming up? Yeah, yeah. When you talk to someone, you see them. After two days or two years, you see a change in them. Yeah, so when you try to encourage someone, you just reach out. Yeah. All you have to do is reach out and spread some love. This new yeah. constitution of ours, has it been helpful for folks like you? Not really, because now the grouping people with albinism as disabled. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that because I have both arms, both legs, both eyes. So they're grouping us as people with disabilities. So I think that's a different category altogether. So it doesn't really favor people with albinism, according to me. It's a good yeah. point, Doctor. Huh? I mean, can you imagine just being dumped in a group you of know, people? That's exactly. But you see, I think uh, for the time being, because we really have a long way to go, by the time people m learn more about people with albinism, accept them in the society and all that, I think it might be still an advantage for them to be uh, put in the group of disability. Because uh, really, m uh, the way the situation has, the present generation, many of them are, uh, like I told you, single parent children from very low socioeconomic uh, uh, and uh, being grouped in the disability might give them a little advantage because uh, they might get more uh, support for uh, um, uh, support yeah. for education but and doesn't for want to be ca categorized no that. neither mumbi gugi she is also yeah. very vehement that she Correct. doesn't want to be categorized Correct. in that but i think majority of the people if you really see 70% of the people yeah. i think it might be a good idea for us to just I think as the society understands this condition, as the ignorance is banished and people accept people with albinism in their uh, 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 in their houses, in their uh, lives, so when Grace gets a boyfriend, we should know that we have Absolutely. a Absolutely. Can't wait. Can't wait. I'll, I'll treat it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll spread the word. No. <laughs> Doctor, if someone wants to get in touch with you, like you say, you know, they're so poor, they're from a village somewhere up, up there and they don't know how to get in touch, they come without shoes or without, you know, with the torn clothes and stuff, how do they get in touch? I'm actually very uh, grateful to one of my friends, Mrs. Jyoti Mukherjee, she uh, runs the Software Technologies and Institute of Software Technologies. She actually uh, did it as a CSR project to give us our website. It is uh, www.albinismfoundation.com. Our email, uh, dr.c, uh, Albinism Foundation, uh, is our uh, email address. Uh, it's all given in the, our brochures. Yeah, we'll put it up and on the screen as well. Yeah, so uh, we, have a found, uh, we have a website. So people can get in touch with us uh, on the website. And uh, yes, as long as you know, uh, we are also trying to reach uh, through my foundation. I want to reach children with uh, orphan children. I want to reach children with uh, disabilities. I want to reach children, uh, underprivileged children. Because imagine if the mother has been, if the fourth child was uh, an albino and the mother was thrown away from the house uh, after the fourth child, uh, imagine what happens to the other three then. They also become underprivileged or, uh, yeah, some right. of them, as soon as a child is born with albinism, uh, the rest, rest of the brother and sisters don't even get an education and it's really the situation so we we don't want to just reach them it's also to reach the families where children with albinism are there Absolutely. and i think it's a long way i i we have a long way to go yeah, but at least it's better than tanzania or ivory coast or where they yes, you know they yeah, literally yeah, sacrifice kenya kenya is wonderful kenya is wonderful and we have wonderful role models if you see even the 11 girls with whom i have uh, started this foundation Amazing women. Amazing women. Yeah. Amazing women. Gracie, if mm -hmm. God willing, you have a child a few years from now who has albinism. What are you going to tell them? How are you going to teach them that they are normal like you? They just see me. So I'll be the inspiration. <laughs> and they won't even have questions. Like what if they go out and say, Mommy, they're, they're laughing at me because I'm different from them. What, what would you tell them? You are about? unique and you are special. Yeah. I think they'll just have to... Because the way you bring up a child and the way you accept them is how that's, her, that's, the, that's the mindset they'll have. 
So if they feel accepted and loved, they won't even have questions. That's why I didn't even ask my mom, how come I'm like this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, was, I got all the love and support I needed. Yeah. yeah. And uh, doctor, I was asking Gracie earlier on, I mean, does she ever, has she ever thought of having wished she was black? Or with melanin, for lack of a better word? And I he said, no. I'm good. <laughs> Actually, if you really, if we really see clear, uh, nicely with the eyes that the way I see, I think uh, an albino child or an albino girl is the most beautiful crea creation of God. Really, the most beautiful. They are more beautiful than uh, than people uh, with black skin. Really. <laughs> Well, this one is very beautiful and, yeah. and confident. And but you see all of them. You see our pictures and you see yeah. our photographs. Yeah. They're really beautiful. Yeah. And I think, you, think you know, it's been somehow or the other with the, with the confidence that they have developed now with our foundation and how we are reaching and how I interact with them as well. Yeah. I think um, they are all... I have not seen anybody who is really very... Oh, I wish I was black or something. They are quite comfortable with the skin. In their own skin. Are okay, but yeah. um, people are there for the rest of us. Have we just been ignorant or uninformed or what is it about us? I, I really don't know. I think probably it is ignorance, it is poverty and the worst is the tropical climate. People have never realized that you know people staying in Africa are so much exposed to the sun and I think the medical profession also has somehow uh, failed, uh, failed uh, people with albinism because when a child is born with albinism it's such an important thing for the correct diagnosis. And really speaking is the eyes. The ophthalmologist will be able to tell whether it's an albino child or a normal white child. You know, of course, yeah, some children can be fathered by Muzungu fathers. But the eye specialist will be able to tell whether it's an albino child or a normal child. And I think that's, that's the thing. So correct diagnosis at birth, um, a support uh, for the family when a child is born like that. And there we are playing a very good, uh, big role because I have people like uh, Grace who are role models. Because parents also tend to get worried that their skins are so sensitive they need a lot of expense for uh, for sunscreen and all that and we have to tell just take care that the child is not in the sun after six o'clock in the evening let the child do what uh, he or she wants to do play let them play normally eyesight let them grow up normally when we come to the stage that uh, they are not able to see or going going to school i would actually i what we generally advocate is uh, every child should have uh, glasses between six to seven years of age well, when they're going to primary school if i give glasses to very young ones they'll keep on breaking them and you know at the moment it's uh, financial constraints also mm -hmm. there so we give uh, glasses when the child is entering for a standard one and let the child sit in the front yeah. let uh, ma, ma, the teachers give him notes after the class so for close up you see if this you ask grace to read she'll not be able to read here because of uh, she brings something very close to yeah. it but close yeah, the, they can read well so, yeah. some of us do the same thing and you know yeah. and yeah. it's supposed to be normal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and some of us had bloodshot eyes and was supposed to be normal <laughs> <laughs> almost 60 to 70 percent of our children in, in or uh, people with albinism in kenya my own observation are short-sighted now short-sighted people may not see far but reading they can they can do their school, they can go to the class, yeah. you know, a sympathetic approach by the teachers uh, uh, goes a long way for uh, this child to be accepted in school and I think that's the best way of creating awareness. Absolutely. When I'm putting a child in a normal school, the child is teaching the whole school that how normal he is and how beautifully he is studying. All right, crazy, we've got about a minute and change to go. This is your camera over here. Okay. Look at your people out there, look at all of us out there and tell them what you need to tell them. You've got about a minute. Alright, um, people with albinism are normal, so I'd just like to tell everyone else that don't see me as maybe strange or weird or anything. I'm just normal, just like you, and given opportunities and a little push, but mainly opportunity, I'll just achieve anything that a normal person can achieve, or even more. Because you have the drive in you to prove the world, to prove it different there. Yeah. And you bleed just like the rest of us if I was yeah, to cut you. Yeah, red blood, not blue. <laughs> <laughs> not blue blood, red blood. <laughs> There's so much confidence, incredible. I, I'm, I'm she, this girl has really brought to her organization. And you knew her which was for? Yeah. So huh? Among my yeah. first patients I saw in Kenya after coming from India. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. You're going to get back? Oh, yeah. you are already? I am. I am. <laughs> Why would you find all this time? You have school in the evenings, you're working for Dr. Chopsy. Um, with a lot of discipline, you have to be really disciplined and you, I have to really manage my time well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And it's a good thing you don't have a boyfriend. You know, they're very distracting, by the way. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chopsy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Well done. Thank you very much. Good yeah, job. Yeah, good. Keep doing what you're doing.
Gracie, yes. you're an inspiration. Thank you. At 20 years old. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. At Grace Maya, M A Y A, at Queen Aggie Jeff, the hashtag is JKL. And we've got a new line for you tonight Help Ever. Hurt Never. Did I get it right? Yeah. Look at that. It's easy to remember sometimes. Yeah. Help Ever. Hurt Never. People with albinism are just like the rest of us. In fact, like Dr. Choksi said, they're probably even better looking than us. Much. <laughs> What an inspiration, what a Thursday, what a show. This is what we mean when we talk about inspiration. And yes, uniting this nation because we are all one people. Thanks so much for watching. Next week, new week, new topic, new guests, new theme, same place, same time. Right here on Kenya's television network, KTN. Keep watching. Thanks for watching. Good night.